Hello and welcome to the Wellaverse with Tim and Chris. How's it going? We are back for a second in a row episode of, of The Wellverse. <laughs> We're on fire. On fire. We have our life together, man. Um, no, we're actually really happy to be back recording another episode. Um, and this week's topic is really interesting. Um, we were going to talk about body image, but we're going to save that for later because I wrote a blog post through the week about social media and sort of the impacts of you know, this massive thing that we all do every day on our health. And I thought it was really interesting and we're geared up to talk all about it today. Mm, so the topic is actually called how to make social media healthy. What are we calling this? Yeah, I don't know. We haven't decided yet. I'm sure by the time it's up, we will have. Having a healthy <laughs> relationship with social media. Yeah, kind of the idea, I guess, is... Social media is this massive beast. How to be a healthy selfie. It's a... Oh, shoot, Tim. <laughs> it's a beast, but it's not going anywhere. And it's our responsibility to figure out how to use it. That's the general gist. We also have done a fair bit of research. We've got some stats for you on the way that we all use social media. Um, we're going to tell you some things about the way social media works that you probably don't know. Like um, the mechanics. Yeah, of... like the actual algorithms and... Mm. All of that. So that's going to be interesting. And then we're going to think about what some of the issues are that we have that are sort of affecting our mental health because of social media. And then what we can do about it. Some practical tips. Positive. Yeah. Because obviously it ain't going nowhere. It's here to stay. We ain't going nowhere. Oof. We ain't going nowhere. Mm, you are so lame. <laughs> okay. First, before we jump in, Tim, what have you put your energy into this week? This week I have put my energy into oh, a really cool thing. Um, I've been doing something new at work. I'm putting together a, a new exercise group for people who have Parkinson's. So it's, um, it's been really interesting getting in touch with people um, in the local area who might be able to benefit from an exercise group for people with Parkinson's, mm -hmm. um, as well as just refreshing over the research about, um, you know, the best way to structure a group and the best type of exercise. Um, yeah, so it's really exciting and um, I've been working hard at that. Nice. Among other things. Nice. Um, I'm trying to think of what I've been doing. I have been a little bit all over the place um, with my health this week. I have not felt in tip-top shape but that's okay we have weeks like that what i don't have know you've been putting your energy into um, well probably trying to feel good trying to feel well i would say so mm. just resting eating good food um but i have been oh i have i should say this i have started working at a shared office workspace on my um, work from home days because i found that working from home it's sort of really lovely in theory but it's really hard to be productive. Um, and I know everyone's different, but for me, it's really helped me. I found this um, shared co-working office space in Charlestown near where we live. Um, it's called Dash. And um, it, yeah, already my productivity has gone through the roof. So that's really exciting. Um, I have a little office with other people who are working hard and um, there's a kitchen and there's an espresso machine. That really helps. That really helps. Yeah, no, I'm loving it. Cool. Cool. So, let's jump in. Um, what I wanted to talk about first, Tim, were some of the stats on the way that we use social media. So, particularly for Aussies. Mm, um, mm. Like in the intro, I thought it was interesting you were saying like everyone's on social media. Um, yeah, Looking well, at the stats, almost well, everyone's on social media. Like, okay, here, this will give you an idea. 70% of people in Australia use Facebook. 70%. Okay. 70% of people. That's yeah, all. I have an account. Yes. Um, and 50% of our whole country uses it daily. 
Mm. So, so when you think about that, that you've got an account, you're checking it every day. Every second person is checking Facebook every day. So like 50%. 50%, not 100%. <laughs> um, one in five Australians are on Instagram um, and 59% of those access it every day. So a lot of people are just daily checking their feeds. Mm. Um, over a third of the people that are on any social media account are checking it more than five times a day. So I'll put a little link in our show notes to, as to where I got all these statistics from, but um, there's this website called Social Media News and they get all the stats every month to track our usage as a country, as a nation of social media. And the trend is just increasing yeah. at a rapid rate. That's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, I wonder how old those stats are. And no, that's, no, the, that's the whole June. thing about social media. Like, <laughs> yep. of course, the stats are up to date because that's the whole point of social media. Like mm-hmm. this instant connection and instant feedback to the financiers or whoever about how many people and what their demographics are. Yeah. So, yeah, lots of other stats and research needs to be done by a census every however many years and all the data is old. But with social media, it's, it's always current. Instant. Mm. Yeah. Um, and, you know, people can determine, you know, what time we're using social media, what um, platforms we're most interacting on. Um, Facebook is dominating by far, like it's just insane globally, not just in Australia. Um, but Instagram has trended up massively. Um, mm. So has Twitter Snapchat. As a more popular social media yeah. network a few yeah, years ago. Yeah, as has Snapchat. Yeah, so, wow. yeah, um, it's, it's kind of, I guess the trend is these visual forms. YouTube is still second to Facebook. Um, yeah, which, you know, it's it sort of does technically of fit a into a social yeah. media platform. Yeah, anyway, um, point being, like, it, it's a very pervasive part of everyday life and there's very few people who aren't involved in social media at all. Um, so it's this big growing beast. <laughs> um, and, yeah, I think we all have a responsibility to actually learn a little bit about how it works because... Um, we think because it's free that we're there, we're winning. Like we're like, oh yeah, all this awesome content just waiting there for me. Mm. Um, but I think it's interesting to think about, you know, what's actually the goal of social media, the people who are creating these platforms, what are they trying to do uh, or achieve by them? And if you're getting the product for free, then does that mean... You're the product. You're the product. Yeah. yeah. We had a friend that used to yeah. say, yeah, if you're not paying, you're the product. And it's really true. You know, the the reason that social media platforms continue to operate is that they generate revenue through advertising. Yep. And so, we just keep feeding them. Yeah. With, yeah. By you using know, them. A, a social media platform um, gains huge amounts of popularity, gets all this investment, but then the speculation is how are they going to be able to monetize? And, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, um, Facebook bought Instagram. Instagram changed all of its algorithms and the way that it's set up so that it could facilitate people paying to put their stuff into, you know, everyone's hands. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's that's a huge factor to think about when we are using social media. Um, it It's something you really have to be aware of. It is, and I know like on the surface, we all know this, there's ads in the sidebar, there's this, there's yeah. that, but it's not just about the actual advertisements themselves. Like social media is doing, they have these algorithms that do whatever they can to increase the chance that you are going to click and engage and comment and share. And come back tomorrow. and And come back the next day. Yeah. Or the next hour. Mm. Um, so how, how does this stuff actually work? I had a bit of a research um, of the algorithms that particularly Facebook and Instagram use. Um, and it's so interesting. Like we think that we're just scrolling through and even if we're not particularly, like even if you don't comment or like or share, Facebook has these ways of telling um, what you like and it does this thing called, um, what was it, relevance. It gives a relevance score 
to every post and every image and every video. So it specifically looks at you as a user, what you spend time scrolling through, what you mm-hmm. linger on when you're scrolling through your feed or what you like and comment yep. and tag. Whether you go into widescreen video yep. mode, whether you turn up the volume, yep. all of that adds Every points to little the relevancy of scroll that post. or click that you do yep. interprets, uh, Facebook uses that as data about what you like and what you're interested in. And so it will then look at all the posts that you might be interested in and it gives them a score of how relevant it thinks it's going to be to you and that's what you see at the very top of your newsfeed. It sorts them in order of most to least relevant. Um, The scary thing I found out though while I was doing all this research was Facebook not only uses that information to determine what's going to go on your newsfeed but it also assumes that because your Facebook friends are your friends that that stuff might be interesting to them too. So your activity on Facebook determines or plays a role in determining what Facebook will put in your friend's newsfeed as well. Um, I just think that's really interesting that we're all sort of determining what's going to be put in front of us um, just through what we like and what we look at. Mm -hmm. And so sort of we're determining is Mm. an interesting thing because, Mm. you know, there's this computer algorithm that, you know, a whole bunch of people have designed to create an optimal user experience, but it is our input that drives that yes. system, um, you know, yep. directly. Yeah. And rep- there's a few interesting points to this. Like on the one hand, you might think, oh, well, that's awesome. Like, and that Zuckerberg, um, who owns Facebook, this was his intention. Um, he said in a Q&A session back in 2014, he said, um, what did he say? I actually have exactly what he said here. Our goal is to build the perfect personalised newspaper for every person in the world um, to show you the stuff that's going to be most interesting to you. Um, And you think, oh, well, that's nice of Mark Zuckerberg. 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 Yeah. But, um, you know, why, why do they want to do that? Well, the answer is because they want you to be engaged. They want more people to use Facebook. They want you to come back to Facebook because if you don't, you won't see the paid advertisements and you won't buy the products and their marketing fund will dry up. Mm-hmm. So it's sort of this big self-perpetuating beast. And there's so many great things about Facebook. Like I can't count the number of times I've seen something just absolutely hilarious or really useful or just, you know, things that I think, wow, you know, that's really helpful for me today or entertaining or whatever it may be. But there's also all that stuff that we're scrolling through every day that's just filling up our brain space sort of without us even thinking about it sometimes. So I think, you know, there's sort of a scary aspect to that um, in terms of how it might be affecting us Mm -hmm. subconsciously. Um, So, yeah. Something that I was thinking about was we, we, you know, in our 20s got – mobile phones when we were in late high school. You Mm. know, our our social networks had sort of been shaped a little bit by the internet with maybe sort of MySpace and MSN Messenger, um, which was a pretty involved thing at the time, but nowhere near the level of of what Facebook, sort of um, WhatsApp and Snapchat are these days with how like really engaging it is and how pervasive it is in our lives. Or in yeah. in some people's lives, and like I I feel really fortunate that I was able to grow up and you know get mostly an adult brain before all of this technology oh, became sure. a thing. Because you know, kids coming into early teenagehood just surrounded by this kind of like really powerful you know mind numbing stuff is a bit scary. I I can't actually imagine what it must be like for them because yeah. it's well, just it's, it's just a fact of life for yeah. them. It's yeah, that's the it. Like it is. it is just normal for them. It's yeah. no big deal. Like it's just this is the way it is and, you know, digital natives and all of this stuff. Mm. But just thinking about Zuckerberg's quote of, you know, we just want to make this really great user experience. Awesome. All this functionality, all of this ease of use, but there are downsides. Oh, there are sure. things that people need to be aware of. And when you're an unthinking, unknowing child growing up in that, you know, potentially 
dangerous or sort of mind sucking, you know, hole, you can really get mm. destroyed. You mm. see people um, with like diagnosed internet addiction, yeah. you know, spending thousands of dollars on World of Warcraft or just, you know, never going outside because mm. they're playing 20 hours a day on an internet game. Like it's just, Crazy. it's really powerful. And I think the important thing to remember too is like you might think to yourself, oh, like I don't really think I have a problem with social media. Like I, I don't, I don't, you know, spend too much time on it. I don't feel like I'm a slave to my phone, whatever, you yeah. know. But we are all part of the machine. If you have a social media account at all, if you post anything ever or if you like anything ever, you, or you look at anything or, ever yeah. or you turn the volume up on a video. Anything, ever. any yeah. activity that you do is contributing to the environment of social media. Um, mm. it, we make it what it is. And we'll yep. talk a little bit more yep. about that so later. So it is, it is interesting to, you know, depersonalize <laughs> yes. social media yes. um, and say like, oh, you know, that terrible social media, you know, the algorithms of all of the software companies. It's like, like well, oh, how bad of social media is destroying society. creating links to content that people make. Yeah, it's, it's us. Social media is all of us. Mm. And I know that sounds corny, but it's incredibly true. Um, if we weren't on it, it wouldn't exist. So um, if you weren't making choices, uh, your choices just shape what it's like. Yeah. My choices shape yeah. it. So both scary, but also powerful and yes. potentially positive. Yes. And that's, yeah. yeah. So we'll talk, let's um, talk about some of the impacts or the problems that s social media is having, particularly on our mental health. I think, mm. I mean, yeah, I think it's really important to talk about it, um, especially to figure out how to guide the younger generation through it. But not just that, like I know plenty of adults who are probably being fairly negatively affected by social media. So uh, even if we don't sort of acknowledge it or think about it. So and here's what we sort of thought about. Um, the first thing I wanted to talk about was FOMO. Fear of missing out. Yeah, major FOMO. Who's ever had FOMO? Oh, <laughs> I'm like, hands up. <laughs> like Sorry. Children. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. You can put your hands down now. Yes, hands down. We, no. Okay. Scenario. You look on your Facebook feed on Monday and you see all these awesome photos from an event that's been held by one of your friends or a friend of a friend. And it just looks like, man, they had the best time and, oh, I wasn't invited. Um, now as adults, I feel like we're pretty good at dealing with this and just being like, oh, you know, whatever. I enjoyed my night at home with the wine and the cheese, but for teenagers growing up, this can be a massive isolating thing. Um, yeah. If people, are witnessing their friends having what they perceive as the most amazing time, cause Hey, mm. we put all the photos up of the awesome, wild, crazy, fun things that we did. We don't put the photos up of us all just being on our phones, ignoring each other while mm -hmm, we're there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it can be it can be a massive thing in um, building someone's self esteem or breaking it down. Yeah, um, yeah. So there's a couple of things there, like just the fact that that photo is literally just a snapshot of the time, whole night. Yeah. Um, you know, blah blah blah. How are you going? Oh, photo smile. Click. Yeah. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. And also the skills to realize that, of course, people do stuff when you're not around. You're not a child that the world disappears as soon as your eyes are shut yeah. and then it reappears again. Mm -hmm. as soon. Like, of course, people are yeah. out doing things when you're at home alone. But, yeah, when you're, when you're young and you're um, impressionable, um, well, even if you're not young, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. before you've developed the skills to realize that that's, that's okay – yeah, it could really, really mess. It can really, yeah, damage people's psychology. And I think as adults, we, I think we do still get that same thing. You know, you see people's events or you see particularly people's um, holidays, if they go on holidays with each other as adults, I think it's, it's hard not to feel like you were intentionally left out because mm. we're all so connected on social media. I think in some cases we forget that people have real friendships that like they, they have a friendship in their own right that doesn't involve you and that that's okay because we're so used to exposing our life on social media. I think you forget that 
everyone's got different connections to different people. Mm. And just because they have a close relationship with one person doesn't mean they don't also like you. And it's okay if, if they've spent more time with that person, that's fine. Like mm. I think there's just this big tendency to have jealousy or a fear of a fear of missing out or being left out socially. Mm. Um, so are there any positives to FOMO? Or any ways that you can replace it with a positive thing? Um, I think being happy for people is, and yeah, being sort of unattached is probably the way to go. Like, and I, I feel like I've learned this skill really well, but again, it'll come into our next point, um, contentment. If you're content with your own stuff that's that you've got going on in life, then you're not going to be worried if you weren't at the latest event or whatever. Um, yeah. I think another thing though with this fear of missing out thing is people's need and dependence to check their phone all the time, like check what's been going on on social media and also people's dependence to post stuff. Like you don't want to miss out and you want to make sure that people know what you're doing and that you're a, you're a player, like as in you're in the game, you're in the game of life. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like we feel like we can't let things just go by without telling everyone about them. Um, and like, that's really evident with everyone's baby announcements and holidays and all of that and all the hashtags, sorry, not sorry, Europe spam, blah, blah, blah. And, and it's great. That's what social media is there for. It's there for sharing. But I think um, people often maybe get carried away and feel like if they don't share it, it didn't happen. Mm. It's it's definitely a fine line because mm. looking back on that year's worth of memories or or seeing Facebook pop up a you know on this day four years ago kind of memory yeah like that's a really nice yeah, sweet thing nice. to to look back on um, it's like a highlight reel of the highlight reels <laughs> you know people actually liked this photo four years ago yeah um, but being able to have that self assessment of what's the benefit of this habit yeah and what's the potential ongoing harm of this habit and being able to you know, assess that risk realistically and be strong in yourself with being able to make better decisions in the future, hmm. it's really difficult. And it's, it's, it's a really recent social skill that we, have to we haven't quite figured out yet. Yep. Yeah. And I think it's important to, well, we'll talk about this now. Our, our next point about how using social media can be so damaging to our mental health. It has to do with unmet expectations. And I think this is probably the most dangerous thing about social media. And I'm particularly thinking of Instagram and Facebook when I talk about this. I think both of these platforms create a very unrealistic view of what life should be like. And I'll explain what I mean. We see all our individual friends or people that we follow, we see the best bits that they have to offer. So we see one friend is in Europe having an amazing time. Another friend has just renovated their beautiful um, inner city house. And another friend, her home business is going really well. And uh, another friend has just joined a beautiful new yoga studio. And that's amazing. Another friend's just had a beautiful baby and it's just Pinterest, Pinterest city and, you know, someone else is announcing their pregnancy. Someone else had a delicious smoothie bowl. Someone else yep. has abs that are amazing. So at the end of scrolling through your feed, you're thinking, I need an awesome job, an awesome holiday. I need to both be pregnant and have a new pretty baby mm-hmm. and a job. But I have to and... look good while doing it. Also, don't forget, that's really yep. important. Yeah. Um, my baby has to look really good also. <laughs> and if it doesn't, I will be tempted to swap it. <laughs> um, but, yeah, the point is we build all of these individual stories into one imagined person and we just think everyone else has all of that going on we don't think oh all these people have shown the one best aspect of what's happening in their life right now the one thing that they are most happy about and most wanting to share and boast and brag about um we sort yeah, of or just, we just, or just stoked on yeah. and love and, that's, and, are and that's great. About. That's great if they yeah. want to share that. But we have a tendency as people to like it's sort of like cutting and pasting this botched up image of what we think one person is doing. And no one is doing all of those things simultaneously. 
Yeah. If they are, their head will be exploding. Yeah, and look, we know that logically, but there's just this impression subconscious that's created, impression yep. that just sits there that, oh, yeah, I do need a better car. Mm. Oh, yeah, I, I, you know, yep. and that idea of keeping up with the Joneses. Um, yeah. I, like, I feel like we, we don't admit to ourselves that we do that. We don't want to say, oh, like I really envy their life. But like sometimes we literally write, oh, hashtag relationship goals or hashtag house goals, like when we're looking at someone else's mm, stuff. And it's mm. it's our way of saying, oh, I really wish, like why can't I have that? I should have that. And you can end up just really being dissatisfied with what you do have, which is so so sad yeah like we all have so much yep um i think it's exactly the same thing though that the internet has created an explosion in you know knowledge sharing in progression of like extreme sports is probably my example where people get the chance to actually see what other people are doing and and actually be you know inspired and motivated to know what is possible what's out there and be pushed to do it themselves. And I suppose you don't really see the the picture of the harm that's created when people take big risks and, you know, no. come off and, you know, get destroyed. But I think a positive factor, you know, where you actually see what's possible and see what's out there is people are doing triple backflips. They're, um, yeah. you know, planching on the side of a cliff. They're, Yeah, you know, I, I think... All of that is really silly in terms of like, yes, it's positive and it's entertaining, but we, it's all part of why we have, we end up with these really unrealistic ideas mm. of what we should be mm. able to do. So like the physical things or like the possessions or the, um, you know, bodily function of stuff you can do, you know, that's, that's a, a factor, but your worth as a person isn't actually defined by those things. Yeah, That's but I, I think the, the danger is that people do... Def- they're confused. Yeah, the totally, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so some of the things that I think this particularly um, affects is people's body image. And, you know, we all know about hashtag Fitspo and all these... Particularly, I've noticed it's mostly women, but I guess that's because I'm a woman and that's what the algorithm's throwing up at me. Um, But, you know, you've got your Kayla It scenes and everyone who are just, they are unrealistically um, thin. Well, no, a a picture of anyone else is an unrealistic expectation for everyone else. Because they are them and they're going to look like them. They look like them and you look like you. And I think... Yeah, it, it's just so pervasive though in people's brains and it's all sort of framed as positivity and, oh, isn't this lovely and so wonderful and we're so healthy, yippee. But, I, yeah, it can be really damaging for people who aren't there or who don't who don't have the skills or the knowledge or the education to access fitness and health and all they think is, well, what's wrong with me? Why aren't I like that? Yeah. Like there's, there's a big, big... Um, issue there yeah I, I see the potential um i don't actually know the trends and rates of issues like that like um like orthorexia like, and anorexia yeah and rates of, yeah, of body eating dysmorphia. disorders mm. i'd i'd guess that it's probably increasing, increasing um I but whether so. you can pinpoint social media as the major causative factor i think it uh, contributes but um yeah, another one is like lifestyle goals. This is a huge one for me. Uh, as a young adult, when you're, you're going through all the motions of career and deciding if and when to have a family and thinking about thinking about, about, about buying a house or renting, all this stuff can get really overwhelming if you're looking at social media as your guidepost. And I think that's where a lot of people's anxiety um, these days comes from. We have these ideals that we drum up from looking through Pinterest or looking through our Instagram feed and just seeing what other people have that we perceive as a lack. Um, and we can just drive ourselves insane um, trying to reach for these things. A lot of people get themselves into serious debt, like serious debt, because they're trying to achieve something that, you know, is just transient. It's a trend. Daily and- smashed avocado. Uh, oh. To me, that's worth it. But um, yeah, this can be for people's careers as well. Family goals, like people end up 
envying other people's family life. And I just need to say, nobody's family is perfect. And anything that people are showing you on social media is the absolute best moments in their family. They are not showing you all the ugly, crazy, bizarre stuff that happens because, you know, we we don't want to share the the terrible stuff. If someone you know doesn't have a crazy family, you don't know them. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly. You don't know them that well if you don't think their family's crazy. Um, And relationships. This is a massive one. I think people build up ideals for what they expect their partner to be like. Um, and yeah, I think that's that's the killer is we have these expectations and if our partner fails to meet them, then, you know, that relationship just goes south really quickly, um, which really is a shame because that's not really the point of relationships. You don't, you don't partner up with someone so that they can meet all of your needs. That's not, that's not the game. But I thought you've been watching The Bachelor and <laughs> isn't that what, what we learned? <laughs> oh, golly. Anyway, um, let's talk about self-obsession. Mm. Mm. What do you think about social media and it, it's the way it makes us really self-absorbed, self-centered? I read a little factoid that said... Um, In social media commentary, you're three times more likely to talk about yourself than when you are in real life. Hmm. So it's like, I think this, I think that on my iPhone. I, 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 me, me, me. This is me. Me, me, me. Yep. Egocentric. I can't even. I, I, I. I need this. I can has cheeseburger. (laughs) Exactly. (gasps) That's what we should talk about. Memes. Anyway. um, Yeah, I think... It's like it is the ultimate tool for self blowing your own trumpet, tooting your own flugelhorn. Flugelhorn. Flugelhorn specifically. Um, And I think it's really It's an antique flugelhorn. I got it from Europe. Did you know? And can I just say there's a few, um, you know how there'll be a new statement or saying that sort of starts trending like if it doesn't serve you, get rid of it. Now, a lot of, a lot of people who I love say this and it's kind of like a, it's a way of saying, oh, you know, anything that's negative in your life or that just isn't working for you, get rid of it. But the idea of something serving you to me is just a really selfish way to look at the world. Like, you know, if something's not making me happy or giving me benefit, I will get rid of it. What about the things that you do just for the benefit of others. Like mm. what about selfless acts? What what happened to all of that? We don't sort of promote that or even talk about that on on social media. Yeah, I, I think it's really interesting. I on some levels agree with the idea that, um, what's the phrase? If it doesn't, if it doesn't serve, serve you, you, let it go. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Everything we do really is for us. It Every action that we have is due to some need to fulfill some desire. Mm. So whether it's like a purely selfish thing where it's just like, get out of my way, I want that food, um, or it's, no, I, I volunteer at this organisation because the, the stuff I get back from that behaviour is so worth um, the effort and time that I put in. You know, So in the end, it's still meeting a need and responding to something in us. Mm. We, we, even doing things for other people is, is due to some thing inside us. Yeah. So to think, you know, if it's not serving you, then, then let it go. I think it's a decent phrase in that it helps you to reassess your life and create some priorities and decide what is important to you. And it acknowledges that, you know, you can't have it all. And there are probably some things that you do need to let go so that you can hold on to the things that you value. But yeah, what I don't like is the idea that, um, you know, if it's not what you'd prefer to do, then don't ever do it Mm. because there's plenty of examples where... You should just suck it up and do something for the good of someone else or something else. Yeah. 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 And, you know, in the end, you win anyway because if you've got a a well-functioning, cohesive relationship where you're able to have both give and take, mm. then 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 you're winning. 
Yeah, so I think... In the end, you're still winning. Yeah. I agree. I agree. It's just a long-term thing. Um, I think that social media, it does just... Like if you think about our need to share, our desire to share, what what are we actually trying to achieve? Are we saying, look at me, look how awesome I am? And I think we're really clever at hiding that that's what we're actually saying. Like, hey, like, don't you think that Check this thing that I did was cool? Anyone? Anyone? Um, and I think people tend to get really fixated on likes and comments and yeah, follows. Well, well, that's and it. The, the, the numbers like, can drive people crazy. The like button only appeared sort of a little way into Facebook's, yeah, you know. 10 years ago thing. It wasn't. It wasn't always part of it, but now it is the whole thing. Um, people will... People, men will die for points. Um, I don't know who said that, but someone smart did. Um, <laughs> you know, people people do dumb stuff to get karma on Reddit. Yeah. They do whatever yeah. just so that they can have arbitrary internet points. And yeah, and pe- uh, people translate these points as um, like love and affection. I know it sounds bizarre, value. but in, in the same way that we translate – people thinking that we're attractive, like good looking, we yeah. translate that as self-worth. We yeah. think, well, yeah, well, that makes me a better human. A photo of me in a blue shirt got 100 points and a photo of me in a green shirt got like 1,000 points. I think I might wear the green shirt out tonight. Mm. Like that's yeah. pretty normal. Yeah, I don't know. I think <laughs> you've got to, yeah, you just got to be, I don't know. Not attached. That's that's the thing I'm learning in life. Like you can put things out there to share and that's beautiful and lovely, but I think you've got to remember that social media is not reality and it's your face-to-face relationships that actually count. Yeah, if you spend too much time just preening your collection of beautiful photos, it's really just like sitting there looking in a mirror. Yeah, and like, you're not actually living yeah. life. And, and life and happens you're just, every you're day. You're just dwelling on yourself and not pouring your time and energy into other people, which is much more rewarding in the long term because well, you don't want to die alone. Time enjoyed is not time wasted. Nah, so, yeah. you know, define enjoyment. Um, did you find out anything, Tim, about how social media affects our actual brain matter? So, you know, checking and searching and looking and clicking and scrolling. I, I didn't find anything research-wise specifically about, you know, social media but there's, there's lots of applicable neuroscience that explains a lot of our behaviours in relation to our phones and social media. You know, the uh, Facebook, the app, Instagram and getting likes, it's, it's like... Uh, Brain candy. Yeah, it's like a... Um, I don't even know what they're called. A gambling machine. Oh yeah, pokey machine. A pokey machine. <laughs> there's there's bright lights. There's colours. It's stimulating. We are engaged with it, and if we play it correctly, we get rewarded. Mm. And our brain loves that stuff. There's um, neurotransmitters that are released when we just learn new information. You know, the process of learning. Um, in itself, regardless of the actual information, is and having that success of understanding and learning a thing, um, it releases dopamine and serotonin and you feel good about learning a thing. So, you know, take that down the line and you're constantly searching your phone to see what's new, what's going on. Um, You know, I'm a little bit bored, so I'll just sit down and search through my phone because... My brain knows that one time when I looked at my phone, there was this awesome, amazing piece of news and it was so stimulating and interesting that it it really got me going. But then it doesn't actually happen yeah. every time. So, so when you don't get that hit, you, you just go back to your phone every half an we hour d- and we sort of develop Sunday. the same kind of dependency on social media to give us gratification that we would on, say, sort of mindless snacking on food or things like that. Yeah, like, like you, go to, you go to the fridge hit. and think, is the answer mm. to my boredom in the fridge? Nope. 
Yeah. Is it in the fridge yeah. now? Oh, still no. Um, it's the same by just opening your Facebook feed. Why am I here? Yeah. How or do you, you go to call someone and then you go, oh, Facebook. It has a red dot. I'll just click on that. That affects what was I doing again? our mental health. How do you think that actually impacts the way we think or the way we feel long term? Well, there's some research that shows that um, younger people um, are less able to um, remember personal information, so other people's phone numbers and birthdays, because it's just no longer a, a relevant skill. Yeah. You know, our brains will do what we ask them to do. And so now that we have these um, really short bite-sized bite size pieces of information that are just given to us that we can access again at any time just by remembering a key word, um, there's studies that showing that younger people do have shorter attention spans. Yeah, and well, that's not surprising, is it? There's worry there about how that affects, you know, long-term deep learning and concentration yeah. and, and skills like that. Yeah. Um, um, there's also all like heaps of um, studies that are being done to show how using our phones so much um, really disrupts our sleep patterns and things like that. And yep, yep. So, um, this, this sounds really obvious, but sleep is one of the key key elements to good health. If you don't have good sleep, mm. everything else is going to be so much more difficult and it's yeah. a, like it's a downward spiral. The, um, the technology and interfering with sleep, you know, the, the interest and sort of being up and still engaged and doing things and really involved is one part of it. But, but also there's the another, light. Yeah, there's another just really simple physiological thing that if you're still getting especially blue light coming into your eyes, your brain says, oh, well, it's not time to make melatonin and start to feel sleepy, so I just won't. So um, that sleep hormone doesn't actually get released. Yeah, until you're not looking at a yep. bright screen. Which is why you can't switch off. And because you can't switch off, you pick up your phone and, and you, you scroll can, through. Yep. And so and so that, yeah, that melatonin needs yeah. an hour and a half to actually be, be yeah. effective. So you need to have that screen yeah. off. Yeah, and if you, if you actually hours care, you go to bed. if you care about your quality of sleep, then you will do that. If you don't care or you think it's worth it to scroll on Instagram or Facebook before bed, then you'll do that. Like it's a choice. Mm. Um, so, all right. Uh, there was there were some other things, um, research showing that um, gamers in particular, they do have um, faster reaction times and they train their eyes to have better colour contrast discrimination. So their, their wow. eyes actually... And you, um, they, they do this for people with poor vision. They sort of show like a, a dark grey and a lighter grey. And as you play the game, you can get better at discriminating colours. Cool. Um, so that's sort of like a, a positive tick for gamers. But at the same time, it also showed that they have poor impulse control, especially yeah. in violent situations, um, mm -hmm. because you're, you're repeatedly being encouraged to make, you know, um, snap decisions in violent situations and just react. Yeah, wow. Um, that's which, crazy. you know, probably is not the best thing. Oh, but that reminds me. I feel like... Like, in a way, social media um, affects our ability to speak to each other face to face in that I think we end up saying things that we normally wouldn't because we're used to being able to say whatever we want on social media with very little, you know, perceived consequence. So I feel like in some situations you just become a little bit more blasé about thinking before you speak. I, I definitely think so. Mm, like you've seen photos of me in my undies, so like is that what you mean? Well, more just like I'm used to just being able to say whatever the hell my I want. My opinion's actually really important. And then you realise, oh, my words actually affect people, especially when you say them face to face. They're not just going off into some unimaginable universe of whatever. Yeah, They're there's real. that disconnect. Yeah. And you see that taken to the nth degree with trolls. Yes, who, and cyberbullying you know, and all just of that. Psychopaths just saying yeah. horrible things on posts about someone who's died tragically or something yeah. like that. Um, yeah. yeah, and that's that's just something that can be broadcast all around the world and gain traction because it is um, so Shareable. weird and so wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what what can we do um, as individuals to sort of guard our health when it comes to using social media? Um, and I, I thought it was really important to consider um, this question of what can we do because a lot of people, especially like in our parents' generation, say stuff like, oh, like you should just get off the Facebook and the Instagram because it's so bad for your mental health. And it's like, well, getting off isn't really the answer. Social media is not going anywhere. And there's a whole bunch of bozos out there posting things that are not helping each other. Like they're posting things that are just 
really over the top in terms of unrealistic body image goals or things that are not helpful. Um, what I think is more useful is to consider the fact that um, social media works in two ways. It's what we consume, so what we're looking at that affects our mental health, but also our responsibility as users of it in terms of what we post. So I think you can protect your mental health and contribute to making it a better environment for other people by being really conscious of what you're looking at, what you're letting in, but also what are you putting up there? What are you putting out there for the world? And is that helpful or is that going to cause other people issues? If you go and have a scroll through your Facebook feed and just go, wow, these articles that are popping up are just rubbish. That's because of your browsing history. Yeah, it's because that's what Facebook thinks you will be interested in based on what you've been looking at. So um, be, yeah, be... Be a bit more discerning about what you want to let into your brain. Um, Look, I think I think quitting social media is a valid option. Oh, yeah. If you totally just don't want to have a bar of it anymore, do that. But if you think you can take a bit more ownership over it and be a force for good on there, that's a really cool thing to do. Um, we all have heaps of potential. Um, I know this sounds a bit like a utopian ideal, but we have the potential to make it an amazing tool rather than us being tools for it for social media like we are social media we make it what it is and if you think of yourself like that then you can have a newfound sense of wow like I have the chance here to create and share and generate and like collect a whole bunch of cool stuff that I think is going to help other people um and benefit other people by looking at it um Yeah, I think when it comes to protecting yourself, um, strategic unfollowing or hiding posts from certain people if you're on Facebook, I think that's really valid. It doesn't mean you're dissing that person. It just means that you've noticed that seeing those things over and over again isn't actually making you feel good. And If it's not so (laughs) good, then let it go. Yeah, but yeah, in that sense... If it's causing you distress or anxiety or it's making you say things about yourself that aren't actually true, like, oh, my job's not good enough or my body's not good enough, it's probably a sign that you're you're not ready to look at those things. Those yeah. ideals are put up there and no one is forcing you to look at them. If, yeah. if it's causing you harm, unfollow. Yeah. I think that understanding that we create – social media echo chambers is really important. You know, there was a bit of a thing about um, when Trump was elected about that was partly due to social media algorithms where people's viewpoints would just be... Shared so much. Yeah, so things would be shared widely, but they'd only be shared among people who already held those beliefs. So um, you'd never be exposed Mm. to a counterpoint or another side of the argument. You're just shown reinforced... Um, arguments of what you already yeah. believe. So think about the last time you were challenged on social media, as in the last time you saw something that challenges the way you think or the way. Yeah, the, the closest you get is like, oh, that's a slightly interesting new take on something I'm already interested yeah. in. Yeah, like, but wow, you won't get nice. anything that's a nice new that actually helps you to grow and develop as a human being well, because it's all just feeding into your little bubble of what Facebook thinks you want to see or what Instagram thinks you want to see. Um, Yeah, so I think also giving yourself boundaries in terms of the amount of time you spend on social media. Um, The research shows that we're all on it first thing in the morning. We're all on it before we go to bed. Um, And like I just think we're not even happy to wait anywhere anymore without scrolling through Facebook. And it's almost like a bit of a safety blanket rather than having to talk to a stranger or make eye contact with people. Um, it's just our default setting to whip out our phone. So, um, something that could be really good for you if you find yourself just mindlessly scrolling and you want to, and you want to fix that, um, do things like when you get home from work, allow yourself a 30 minute social media, like afternoon tea break or whatever, but then put your um, phone on airplane mode. Like if it comes to that and you think, well, I've got to get myself out of the habit or Mm. just keep it on, but go and put it in a drawer somewhere 
You don't, we don't need to be on it all the time. Spend time with your husband or your partner or your kids or whoever, whatever, your friends, um, and get more of that face-to-face interaction happening because I'm just really worried that we're all going to miss a lot of that for time spent with our device. And when we are 90, we're not going to be like, oh, I'm so glad I have all those happy memories scrolling through Instagram. It's like, no, come on. Um, Yeah, think before you post. That's a big one. Just think, am I posting this to make me feel good or am I posting it because I think it's worthwhile and edifying and sharing it is going to entertain people or amuse people or make people happy and help? If ever you're going to post something that is going to hurt someone, definitely don't do that. People already have enough hurt without you doing that. Um, And also, like, we always envy other people's lives, but think about maybe the effect that your post might have on someone who doesn't have what you have. So if you're going to post a picture of, you know, your amazing abs, just be aware that that picture could be really triggering for a lot of people. And I've, I've been guilty of that in the past. You're really proud of what you've achieved and you want to share that with the world because it makes you feel good. But then you think, oh, hang on, do I really need to put that out there? And am I putting it out there in a way that's actually going to inspire and encourage? Or is it really just to try and make myself feel amazing? Mm. And what cost is that going to have to yeah, other I, people? I, I think it's smart to have an... The understanding of the effect of your actions on other people. Yep. Like that's just a genuine, a basic human sort of function. But I feel we like we have. don't, we put it out there. We don't think of oh, this, even though it's a positive thing, could be negatively impacting others. Um, yeah. And yeah, create useful stuff to share. And it's like the old saying, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything. You don't have to post stuff you don't have anything worth posting don't post don't post just for the sake of posting wait until there's something really valuable that's going to enrich people's lives and post that even if it's a hilarious meme memes are golden post memes so in conclusion memes i can has cheeseburger (laughs) shaking my head smh lol Okay, GTG peeps. <laughs> Thanks for listening. By the way, send any requests for episode topics to info at livingmovingbeing.com.au um, and go to our website, um, www.livingmovingbeing.com.au for more about what we do. We do heaps of stuff. Heaps. Yeah, we love stuff. All right, see you later. Bye. Bye.